today we are going to be making this, this jittery, shaky, frantic text that ramps up its speed and jitteriness as the clip goes on. Gameplay videos or reaction content, I think tons of people are leaning into text effects right now, and this could absolutely slide into any of those. We're gonna to be touching on some cool text tools, so stick around, let's get started. All right, I've got a clean timeline here, and I'm gonna come up to effects, down to titles and grab a plain text plus effect, drag and drop that onto my timeline. And I can extend that for as long as I want this text to appear on screen. And with that text plus selected over here in the inspector, I have all the general text controls. So I can just type in here something like, whoa, or whoa. Change the font to whatever I like, something big, something bold, extra bold, size that up. Awesome. Now we've been able to stay on the edit page until now, but that is gonna change because we're gonna right click in this text box and come down to follower. We will click that. The only thing that you will see change is that this little keyframe will now be red, it'll be enabled. And to get access to the controls we just turned on, we need to click this little icon here to load into the Fusion page. That will load up the instance of that template effect. And you can see if we come over to Tools in Inspector, we have all the same text tools here. But Next to tools, we also have modifiers. And if we click that, we have access to the follower we just created. We've touched on the follower in some past text videos. We're gonna use it in a little bit of a different way today. I'm going to leave these timing settings the same for now. We are going to come over to shading. I'm gonna scroll down. I am also going to move my camera out of the way so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna open up position and here we have this offset control. And on that control, I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to modify with perturb. I will click that and it will give us this new modifier on top of the follower modifier. And now if I pull down this X scale to zero and then pull up the Y scale a bit, if I scrub through my scene, you'll see that the entire text is just sort of randomly going up and down at different intervals. And if I were to mess with these settings more, of course the Y scale, if you ramp that up, it would travel further, but we also have strength, wobble, and speed. I'll move my camera back, cause I'm feeling like it. If I were to let this play, you see this text is kind of just roaming around the screen. If I were to pull up wobble and especially speed, then you'd see we'd get a little bit more frantic motion. And we're actually gonna set up the animation for this now. I'm gonna come to the beginning of our scene, pull down wobble, pull down speed to a little bit less. I'm gonna set those keyframes. Then I'm gonna come into the end of my scene and really crank up that wobble and that speed. If we watch through, you'll see it'll be sort of floating around, but over time, it'll get more frantic, it'll move faster. This is its own style effect if you just like this. And I can even open up my spline where you can see the speed and wobble curve for that. And if I want that to level out a bit, I can select all those keyframes, press F to flatten so it'll start off a little more lax and then it will really get ramped up. Now, here is the real secret sauce. Right now the text is moving all at the same time because we have that animation uh, and it is on the follower, but back on the timing, we have set a zero delay uh, between the characters. This is important. If I ramp up that delay a little bit, then you'll start to see what this effect normally does. Right now, the order is automatic, so it's left to right. And so it is saying between each character left to right, uh, delay by this amount, whatever animation is playing. So right now, the text will actually float behind this main character. And this is its own effect. I probably wouldn't get so frantic with it if this was what you're going for, this sort of like flying, flapping in the wind or flag or something. This could be cool. This is crazy. But it can be the right kind of crazy if instead of order automatic, I come to completely random. And especially if I pull up this delay a bit more, I also came back into this perturb and pulled down uh, these keyframes at the end so it doesn't get quite so extreme. And I think it might help to actually have a little bit more wobble and speed at the beginning so it isn't quite so gap. We want it to start a little scared and really ramp up. If you want a sort of symmetrical look, you can either go inside out or outside in as well or completely random if you just want to get freaked out. And now we have it starting just a little slow and then slowly ramps up, whoa. And you know what, I'm just gonna pull these in so it gets ramped up a little longer. We don't want this taking so long to get going, but just starting a little more restrained and then getting pretty out of hand nice and quick. And on top of this, you can always come back to tools over to settings and turn on motion blur real funky with some of this text flying around. It will take a little bit longer to render, but it will look great. 
Now, one other thing I need to tell you. We've talked about shading elements before, but remember that on this follower, we animated on that first shading element. That means if I want something like a simple outline or stroke, if I come to shading element two, like I'm used to enable that, then that stroke will not be affected by this motion. But if you want to tie this to the animation, you can. You can make this whatever color you want. You could pull up this thickness. You could use these shading element tools like you're used to. Then you come back over to modifiers, jump to shading element to this stroke outline, come back to that same offset control, right click, making sure you can see this, move this camera out of the way, right click on offset, go to connect to perturb value. You click that and the text and all of the outlines and all of those shading element layers, as many as you want, will be tied to that same motion. But this is what you end up with. And as you can imagine, all these controls that we have modified, you can uh, tweak and set to it exactly what you want. How frantic do you want this to get? How frantic do you want it to start? How much do you want it to uh, scale on that Y axis? Do you want to include the X axis as well? You could have these individual characters flying all around the screen and then coming back together if you uh, keyframe that back down. And this is what you end up with. We designed this specific effect where it starts a little more constrained and then gets crazy. But as you can imagine, you can mess with any of the controls that we used to get a completely unique effect. I sort of stumbled onto this method when I was looking for random motion for a text. And I figured out that if you have one random parameter driven by this perturb modifier, then even though that is acting on one individual character by partnering that with the follower modifier and just messing with the order and timing, you can make it look like each individual character has its own completely random motion. Your brain won't recognize the pattern if it's hitting uh, all these characters in a random order. But that is just another super quick text effect I wanted to show you. Again, a specific effect, but touching on tools that can really help you out with lots of different things. I wanna keep doing more focused text stuff like this. I think it suits my channel really well. A lot of you liked my last one, so look forward to more of those. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.